Greetings, greetings, greetings. Back to Nature Africa. Back to Nature Family. Back to Nature YouTube land. Welcome back to our channel. You guys know I don't say my channel, but it's our channel because we sort of approach this from a collective, uh, collaborative effort. Uh, interactive and in a way it's a way of engaging so it's not just um, you guys sit there and watch I like to have a chance to feel that you guys are here with us as we continue to develop out this wonderful beautiful um, divine experiment here in the garden of paradise so we are back today with another beautiful, wonderful uh, episode that we're going to be sharing some really dynamic uh, information. And as all we, you know, as we always have a chance to do with these videos, we're showing different components, different facets, different aspects of what it takes to produce the food which you, I, everyone eats every day but how to produce it in a healthy way, a sustainable way, without all the chemicals. So everything that I'm bringing you here today, guys, know that in one form, shape, or the other, someone on the earth is engaging in this practice, in this science, in this art that we call farming. And that farming is, allows for the food that you will have for lunch, dinner, breakfast, today, tomorrow, and many days to come for the rest of your life, may you be blessed with long, long, long life, um, it comes from this process called farming. And so we're just sort of uh, having a chance to put our lens and open up and show small little different segments of it from an African context, doing it organically uh, to the best of our ability. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, our vision, mission, purpose, statement here in Back to Nature is the closer we are to nature, the more whole, happy, at peace, at ease we are. The further we get away from nature, we get into a state of dis-ease. And so in that regard, we want to inspire, motivate, encourage Kenyans, East Africans, and Africans, as well as those beyond, through a movement to adopt a more natural, holistic lifestyle approach towards maintaining or regaining their health and wellness. So let's get into our episode uh, for today. We're going to be picking up on uh, episode that happened I think three or four videos ago where we talked about the water system the solar you might see some water panels up, I mean solar panels that are up here so we talked about our uh, solar water system and how we began this process of exploring uh, the ability to secure and find water um, everything beginning from doing the hydrogeological survey, uh, which detailed sort of the makeup of the ground. They bring these very interesting uh, electrical uh, pieces of equipment around. Uh, and by the way, the guy who was a uh, hydrogeological hydrogeologist came also with some not so technical tools. He had all the technical tools I did, but he brought, I don't know if you guys have ever seen. They hold two poles like this, right? And as you get certain areas, the poles cross like this, or they cross like that. And it just says, okay, this is where water is, or this is where water, you know, is not, etc. So we are playing around holding the two, and you can kind of hold them with two hands like this, and then they're like this. Interesting sometimes. But we found where, in a sense, we actually began to engage um, the Borehole Company. Came here, they drilled 250 meters. We covered that in the video. We talked about the casings and everything. Wires going all the way down 250 meters. Our entire uh, motor and pump all the way down there. The pipes that bring the water all the way back up. We showed you guys the control panel that's down underneath, as I'm standing right now, on Mount Nature here, which is our nine meter uh, water tower. And we showed you at the base of the water tower where we've sort of built a small enclosure that houses uh, our solar panel uh, that you guys had a chance to see in that video as well that gets a chance to regulate the energy coming from the solar panels and gets a chance to turn the pump, up, pump on, turn it off, you know, etc. So we promised everyone we we're gonna have a follow-up episode. In that episode, we're gonna deal with the storing of water. Now, so once the water now comes up, from 250 meters, about seven, 800 feet down into the ground, and it's sent up through the pipes. What do we do? Ah! 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 Ah!
Sorry about that. I was just uh, communicating with one of our team members here because we were going to be talking about distribution of the water today, the story and the distributing the water. So I want to show you guys how we're going to actually sort of turn on the uh, sprinkler system that we have. It talks about distributing, but we're going to get into that in a minute. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, when the water comes up to, from 250 meters down, we then have a chance to capture what we do with that water and how can we get the water out to the field. Um, so bringing up the technical surface is just one of the Now, getting the water to the pipes, to our puddles, to our little greens that we're growing here, um, there's, there are several ways that we can get a chance to just show that. But a very important what we will call pressure. You need pressure to push water through the pipes, to push water um, at far further distances. And, um, and with that, there are a couple of options for that. You can be able to purchase a, uh, they have these smaller, larger compressors uh, that are sort of um, driven by electricity, find a more economical way to do it and the more economical way to do that is by using gravity and so if you're able to put water at a certain height in terms of the air above what happens just like natural with everything else that sort of raised at a certain level the gravity creates a force and that force has pressure and that pressure can distribute the water to the field. And so that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we put the time, the effort, the resources, the money into building a nine meter water, elevated water tower that's storing these two uh, 10,000 meter water tanks. And so let me grab the, um, the camera from the tripod up here and we're gonna walk around this a nine meter tower and we want to show a couple of items of what is made up here in terms of bringing the water and storing the water as well. And so the storage of the water is also very important because our borehole is producing approximately 2.5 cubic liters per hour. So that's about uh, 2,500 liters per hour and when you are producing maybe that about that amount that kind of water and we because we have these solar panels and we have the sunshine at a certain time of the day and sometimes it's clouds and so we're not, we're not able to pump all the time the ability to store water is super important uh, so that you can have 5,000, 10,000 liters on this side, 10,000 liters on that side to use it at one's discretion um, as it's stored. Now, we want to show you right here at the bottom, between these two tanks, there is a connector pipe. And why is that connector pipe there? Um, we're going to chat, talk about that here in a second. Uh, but it's there, really because coming from the ground, the pipes that go 250 meters deep, this here is the inlet pipe that brings that water from the ground. You might have seen me in the last video, I was at the bottom here sort of showing you the wires and the pipe that in a sense bring the water. So you might remember where we were shooting the other day. Uh, in this area here where our borehole is. So we've piped the water that comes up from under and we run those pipes underground and we then brought them this way uh, and it comes up the nine meter tower via this particular pipe and enters into uh, this tank here. Now also in the tank we have uh, a sensor 
or what we will call a float switch. And that float switch is able to then tell the pump through the control unit that's at the bottom that the water is at this length, the water is at this length, the water is at this length, and if it gets at a certain particular height, what happens is it automatically switch, uh, switches the pump off so that the water doesn't go spilling uh, and you know, you know, all over the place in that regards. Now, because there's only one inlet that brings the water from the ground, into the tanks to store them here um, you then have a chance to fill this other tank on this side of uh, our particular tower by this particular piping system here once again using gravity as well you'll know that gravity the heaviest force will be towards the bottom so as this tank fills up it then pushes out the water tank and that then allows us uh, on the heavier side or on the fuller side to have 20,000 liters of water between these two tanks here. Uh, quickly I just want to also show you uh, sort of the layout of the solar panels. We have 18 of these particular solar panels laid out in three rows of six each and those are the ones that then go feed the particular control panel that we had shown uh, the other day. Now, I'm going to walk here to the other side um, of this tank now to show you the outlet. We talked about the inlet uh, pipe. Now let's talk about the outlet pipe and what happens um, with this particular pipe and how we use the gravity. So here we are on the other far end of our particular solar uh, water tower that's here uh, and on this end we have this outlet pipe that's here. This is why we built this whole entire system so that we can have the water up nine meters high and with the water being nine meters high it allows the gravity to push the water and that gravity is uh, has a lot of pressure on this particular pipe and it sends the water all the way down now with the pressure that we talked about and that's the pressure that is then going to be needed to distribute the water out to the field and so let me now show the distribution and sort of how it works you won't see the piping underground but because of this pressure that we're standing nine meters high it then will allow for what you will see happening here. Let me see if I can have a chance to zoom in. And if I zoom in, you will start to see sprinkler systems that are actually on working right now. And those sprinkler systems are feeding the avocado trees. It's feeding uh, the bananas. Those sprinkler systems are feeding the different indigenous vegetables we're growing, you know, etc. Uh, and we've built those piping out in a way that then will allow us to irrigate the entire section of this phase B, uh, phase two that we are seeing in. Let me pull it, the picture back a little bit. Let's cross over. Hopefully the sun is not too uh, bright here to then capture once again how the sprinkler system and those sprinklers that you see are running purely off the pressure that's coming all the way from these tanks being elevated 90 meters into the sky uh, and then it allows for the water to then get distributed uh, and once again you guys know I talk about the four elements soil uh, the earth uh, water, fire, air, those four elements is what allows life, food to pre be produced. And, uh, and in that regards, um, having the water, water is life, I believe, as Mr. Gadenia said when he was over here. So, in this particular piece area of the farm, we've laid out pipes. And those pipes run, uh, that come from this main pipe that I had shown you here. Uh, from this particular what we will call the outlet we showed you the inlet on the other side the outlet sit down because we once again want that gravity sends it all the way down 
and with that pressure you are then able to distribute the water in to the field in a dynamic way and so with that ladies and gentlemen uh, that's a little bit in the sense with how the water storing works here so you can have uh, water that you're able to store coming out of the ground uh, versus just if you're just pumping with no storage you might have um, you have to turn on uh, your pump and um, you might not get sufficient water that you can distribute it out into the field and then instead of having the compressor system that I mentioned that you spent a whole lot of extra money on we said it was more advisable to build these uh, this water tower put these two 10,000 liter tanks above and let the pressure from gravity um, have a chance to feed these sprinkler systems that we've built out but by the way you might have heard of drip irrigation you can work drip irrigation uh, the same way as well um, and in that regards that's how that works now I want to pull back here and I want to share something that's uh, a little interesting and something that um, when we were looking at in a sense how do we most take advantage and monitor and you my last video was on data collecting data analytics uh, the ability to measure things the same thing goes for water how is it that we can use water most efficiently how is it we can measure it most effectively how is it we can we know by the way even if we're not on the farm is there a way of knowing remotely how much water are in our towers I mean are in our tanks and the question that is yes I'm going to show you a small interesting little device that we have here and with this device we are able actually to remotely digitally monitor exactly how much water we have in our system and so you'll see Okay, it's not showing so well here. Maybe the lighting is not so good. All right, there's a, solar, a small little solar panel that we have here. And what that's connected to, that is connected to a sensor. And that sensor has been placed inside of this particular tank. And then with that particular sensor, let me pull my phone out here. And on my phone, uh, let me go ahead and turn it on. And on my phone here, we have an actual app. And that app um, allows us to have the opportunity anywhere in the world, actually, because it's a digital um, system, to then come in, log in. Am I, am I connected to a network here? Hopefully I'm connected to the network uh, because then I can be able to have a chance to show uh, the app. Okay, there we go. So it turns on, you might see it says tank sensors, flow sensors. So uh, in that regards, let's go ahead and click on tank sensors. And it says here, monitor, monitor your water anytime, anywhere in that regards, All right? Uh, is it going through, are we opening up Let's see if I'm catching sometimes here on the farm. The network is not as great. It's powerful. Okay, it seems like I am not getting a good network connection here. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, what this application allows us to do, it allows us to see exactly how much water we have in both tanks at any given time. We are able to see how the water is used. We are able to see a sort of a map uh, of uh, the particular um, when during the day in the sunlight uh, that we have, when the water is filling like you saw that there's water right now being distributed out the sprinklers are on we're able to see when the water goes down we can look what happened on monday tuesday wednesday we can look what happened uh, over the course of the month 
we can be able to mine. It's a very wonderful system. And by the way, with a system like this, you could be sitting um, even in America or in UK. So many people have reached out to me from around the world and they want to build water systems. They want to uh, build, a, um, you know, a borehole and water towers and tanks, etc. And uh, one of the interesting things is if you are going to be remote or at, at a remote location, uh, you would want to know what's happening with um, the water that may be on your farm. How can you better manage it? You want to know that if your farmer that they're using the water for irrigating um, you know the farm etc so an app like that or tools like that uh, it allows you to use technology in the way that increases the efficiency of what one is able to do when it comes down to uh, monitoring the measuring metrics data etc and so you when we talked about the last video of measuring we also want to get down scientifically to say okay per square meter if we're growing uh, crop a b c exactly how much water is needed during the time in terms of what's recommended for the book in terms of the theory what's the pack application so for instance we know that we need about 20 to 25 liters a week per every single avocado tree that we have here we have 300 on the ground eventually we're gonna have 3,000 here on this particular farm so we must be able to properly calculate how much water each avocado tree is going to need and then if we're into cropping how much water all the other crops are going to need and so this way an approach to this way of farming allows once again for greater efficiency reducing cost raising profitability so that we can keep things sustainable and um, and have a chance to produce healthy nutritious uh, awesome, you know, food uh, that can continue to give us life for many, many, many more years to come. So, with that, that's what I wanted to do with today's video, where we're gonna, t where we were talking about the ability to um, store our water, the ability to distribute that water to the field, the ability to monitor digitally using some of this technology and applications to know how much water we have in our tanks at any particular given time um, so that we can be able to um, use that data to farm more effectively and efficient, efficiently. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we wanted to communicate with to, on today's particular episode and to have a chance to share. And as we continue going forward, we'll continue to share, share more of not only the techniques, some pieces of wisdom, some better insights on how to farm organically from an African perspective and producing great food. As we go forward into this particular month, we'll also be delving in much further into sort of the, the more of the, um, the, I would say, the psychological components of what connecting to nature helps in our lives. You heard me talk a number of videos ago about the seven dimensions of wellness and how when one connects to, um, to Mother Nature and to the earth and to the land, from an African perspective, uh, natural, connecting with nature, that it's able to, in a sense, have a germination for the other dimensions of the areas of life. And so I look forward to having a chance to have those discussions um, going into this particular month of March uh, as we get a chance to move forward. So once again, thank you for your continued support. Thank you for your continued uh, engagement. Once again, if you haven't liked, commented, shared, don't hesitate to um, share, share, uh, share with us a little bit of message here. It gets a chance to get this, uh, this message out to more uh, people. And if you haven't uh, had a chance to um, subscribe, please don't hesitate hitting that subscription button. We greatly appreciate all those who've joined this Back to Nature Africa family and continue on this adventure and on this journey with us and getting a chance to see how the food that we all eat every day is produced in a dynamic way and in a way that's in harmony, aligned with Mother Nature, with universal principles, and with harmony and joy uh, all at the same time. So once again, thank you for joining us. God bless. Have a wonderful day. And 
keep up the good work. Peace out.